All right, folks, here it is. The unboxing of the Mark 7 Auto Drive. All right, so here's the unit, and I'm gonna put this together. Um, guess what I found when I was clearing the bench? Look at this. A small pistol primer. All right, guys, leave in the comment what I should do with it. That will probably pay for this whole setup in a couple months. So here's a little tip when you're setting this up. It's supposed to remove the ram. So there was a handle here, and then there are two bolts. And then you're supposed to pull this off. But it's pretty tough, you can't pull this off. Here. Voila! Here we go. So here's how the press looks like when it's ready to be mounted. Um, you kind of you you take the you take the, uh, the ram from here and you put it here, put it through. Um, you can reassemble this, and you just kind of lift this up and put this on here. Um, you do require some grease, synthetic grease, and um, I just use this weapon grease that I use on mostly my over under shotgun, but. Turns out to be quite versatile. Oh, yeah. so I started drinking beer. Probably shouldn't because after I put this together, I probably can't wait to crunch out a thousand rounds or something. But whatever. Um, I started drinking beer about 30 minutes in. Okay, so now we're in the second day. I spent the first day tweaking it, uh, getting it to work, and uh, so maybe an hour or two, but now it's working pretty good. So here's my setup. Uh, station one, I run a Mighty Armory decap and sizing die. Uh, mix great stuff. I mean, this die actually has a heat sink down there at the bottom. So if you run automated, you probably run a lot faster and that heat sinks, uh, it's really, it's really useful. Second station powder check. Uh, I've got the SSI, um, uh, the expander, uh, the powder funnel, that bells the case really well. Third station, RCBS lockout die. Fourth station, a 3D printed bullet feeder. Fifth station, the DAA 2-in-1 crimp. Seed and crimp die. Alright, here we go. I've got it setting at a uh, 900. I mean, rounds and rounds per hour. It's pretty slow, but it works. Oh, I forgot to put the uh, indexing tabs. Here we go. All right, I want to show a few common scenarios where the press might get stuck and uh, you want to you want the machine stopped and so let's see how the mark 7 handle it first one is a uh, it's an upside down case as you can see there here we go digital clutch activated what you do is you do this you drop down a bit Clear the case, in cycle, and the press resets. Second scenario is NATO crimped brass. So I usually load 9mm and I don't get a lot of NATO crimped brass. I just uh, run it in and uh, let it go and deprime them, a portable deprime them later. But let's see if it screws up the operation of the press. All good.
Here's a third scenario, a powder check. Uh, Mark 7 has a digital powder check, uh, but I want to run, I run a RCBS lockout die, uh, and the machine should stop when there's no charge or double charge. So here, I prepare three cases, no charge, normal charge, double charge. Look at a normal charge first. Okay, that passes. Now look at the no charge. Stopped. Let's clear that. And let's look at the double charge. Here's a double charge. Stopped. Works pretty well. One more thing is that um, I don't have the sensors yet. I have them on order, but uh, I couldn't wait to put this thing together. Normally, there's a. I'm gonna run a low primer sense. Uh, I usually kill C every hundred rounds, so that's a natural time to stop. And there's also the uh, the bullet sense that would be right here in this station four um but you can see those those are pretty simple uh laser if the bullet is not tilted correctly it stops the press but i am extremely impressed with this now just gotta figure out something to do with all the free time i have now